bowl of, of uh, some egg thing. He said, you got to try this. I said, I try, oh. And he said, it's a bit spicy. It tasted fine. And then two minutes later, <laughs> and then we got talking about, I said, you're going to watch the World Cup. They said, no, Turkey's not in the World Cup. I said, England, my country is. Watch England. They said, oh, okay, okay. And, uh, and then, because I, I had to get to this, so I knew I'd be short with them. And for them, I just said, um, I said, um, they spoke English and Cantonese. So I said, I want to give you this. Now for them, I just said, this is something I wrote. Oh. This is a message I wrote. And I had a friend draw the pictures. So I wanted to make it personal. And I gave this to them each, and then they said, do you have English? So I, then they swapped for the English. <laughs> and, the f and I only had that sometimes with somebody. I only had the opportunity to talk and give them a leaflet. And that was, the, I would have, to be honest, I'd have stayed half an hour with them. <laughs> but I, here. And um, they were so friendly. And you know, the heart of this is making friends and sharing our best friend. It's being friendly. Nobody's a stranger. It's being friendly. You're a friendly church. Do you remember I said in the, oh, I said it in the first service. I said, I meet three kinds of churches. I also meet three kinds of people. First group have a do not disturb sign. <laughs> I'm fine. And now you'll meet some of those out there. I'm fine. I have my religion, so do not disturb. Some are nobody home. There's, there's nothing happening inside. They look like they're dead. There's no pulse, no life. You know, they're the walking dead. And then there are those with the welcome sign. And Jesus wore the welcome sign. He was a friend of sinners. So this whole approach is about being friendly. But being yourself, that doesn't mean it's all extroverts. And if you're an introvert, okay, this is not for you. My wife is a quiet, soothing Presbyterian pastor's daughter. Quiet, gentle spirit. So, but we both want to be friendly, but in a more di quieter way for her, you know. And we both start connecting with people. So you be you. You be you. Don't, you're not changing personalities or something. But, um, but it's about making friends and sharing our best friend. And you can't share your best friend in a mean way. <laughs> God wants you to be friends. You need to take his hand of friendship, all right? It doesn't work. The message and the medium, the mood, have to fit. And so, actually, this is all about not trying to outsmart people, not trying to manipulate people, not trying to, you know, uh, this is just about being friendly and sharing our best friend. And... Um, so I get connecting with someone, and I would have asked them this question, but I had to go because I have to be here. <laughs> and, uh, but um, I'll ask someone, I asked several, all week I've been doing this. I'm going to uh, I'm gonna ask you a question. This is for you, firstly. Remember I said it's two questions and four pictures. The, the four pictures are on the wristband. The first question, I'm going to ask you first this. If you could wish one thing Oh, you can turn the slide if you can find that question. Just move it along. Oh, is this the clicker? Good stuff. Do I have to point it this way or this way? Does it matter? Oh, yeah. One wish is a simple, friendly approach to help someone begin and grow in a friendship with God. And this is the first question. If you could wish one thing from God today for you, what would that be? And I want you to ask yourself, I'm asking you that question, each of you. Because we, everybody I meet in the world has wishes, desires, dreams. So if you could wish today, for you, this is life. If you could wish one thing from God today for you, what would that be? And what you'll find is, is something will come on your heart quickly. You don't have to analyze this. So, this is on your heart. And some, it could be about you be about your family and don't think of something spiritual or religious just anything whatever comes to your heart and if something's come on your heart put your hand on your heart if you've already got something 
Okay? If you could wish one thing from God today for you, what would that be? Put your hand on your heart. Okay? Great. What I'd love you to do, two by two, you may be sitting with a friend. If you're sitting with a stranger, smile at them. If they don't smile back, find somebody else. <laughs> but two by two, what I'd like you to do, I'd like you to share your wish with each other. If you're okay with that, share your wish with each other. And then I want you, I want you to pray a short prayer for each other's one wish. So you would pray for her wish, then she would pray for your wish. And I want you to pray, listen, listen. I want you to pray a short sentence prayer, not a long prayer. You're going to pray a short sentence prayer for their one wish. Some of you, that's going to be hard. You're going to pray a long prayer. But I want you to pray a short sentence prayer and pray for that one thing and only that thing. Don't add anything else. The grandmother, the dog, you know. Uh, you know. Would you do that? Two by, two by two. Just go ahead, do that. You have two minutes for the whole thing, two minutes. Short sentence prayer. Oh, this is nice. Father and son. Short prayer. Short sentence prayer. Okay. Wow, two in front continue to pray. <laughs> it's hard to pray a short prayer. We've got used to praying long prayers. There's a place for long prayers. Nehemiah prayed a long prayer, but when he went before the king, he said a short prayer. Can God answer a short prayer? Can God answer a short prayer? And it's interesting, when you're a child, like we had the Father's Day today, a little boy will come to his dad and say, Dad, can I have an ice cream? 
as he grows older, Dad, you're the most wonderful dad in the world. There's no dad in the world like you. Can I have an ice cream, Dad? And your, your requests get longer. And what I found when I'm meeting people in Starbucks or on the plane or in the park, wherever, I'll say to them, Would it, I'll ask their wish. I'll say, oh, and do this with your finger. Say, repeat this with me. If you could wish, you could wish one, thing one thing from God today for you, point to somebody's heart, from God today for you, what would that be? What would that be? Let's do it again. If you could wish. One thing, One thing from God today for you. From God today for you. What would that be? What would that be? And I point to their heart because it's a heart question. It's actually not so much a head question. People answer from here. And I found in connecting with people today, ordinary people, you connect first with their heart before their head. Out of the heart come the issues of life. And I found most people, like this week, will share one of three things. One old lady, we said, oh, pain in my back. Health issue. Another man, Ryan, with his small shop, he said, oh, for my business. It was my father's business for 50 years. He's died. My mother is here. I'm trying to run this small shop. So that was a finance issue. And then the third, yesterday, somebody said, oh, relationship, my daughter with the family. And that was a relationship issue. So most people will share one of those three things, finance issue, health issue, relationship issue. They can share other things. Um, by the way, if somebody said, oh, that I win the lottery, a million dollars, and that will happen. And what I'll do with that kind of question is I'll tweak it, change it a little, so I can pray for that. And I've done this with people. I said, would it, I did it this week. I said, would it be okay, two days ago a man shared that, and I said, would it be okay if I said a short prayer that God would bless the work of your hands to help meet your needs? Would that be okay? And he said yes. So there I kind of tweaked it a little, and... Um, if somebody shares two or three things, I'll say, if you had to choose one of those right now, what would that be? Because I want to find that one on their heart. Sometimes I can tell it's too personal for them to share. I'm a stranger, and especially if I'm a man, you're a woman. And if I sense, you know, it's, I'll say, it's okay, don't worry. I say, you know what it is. God knows what it is. Can I say a short prayer for what's on your heart? If I'm with my wife or you're a couple and it's a woman, I'll usually have the woman pray that short prayer. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, and, um, and here we're not trying to manipulate people or be clever. We're not trying to say, oh, well, let's ask this question so we can get to the second question, the gospel question. This may be the point at where we meet them today. This may be as far as we go with them. But what I found is, and sometimes when, when I ask that question to someone, and I'll ask it slowly. I'll say, uh, we went out and we'd say, hey, we're a group, we're out asking people their one wish. May I ask you, if you could wish one thing from God today for you, and I'll say it slowly, don't say it. If you could wish one thing, God today for you, what would it be? <laughs> so say it slowly. If, if you, and this is why I do my finger. If you could, I so say, if you could wish one thing, from God today, for you. One thing on your heart. For the Chinese, God is someone in the sky, up in the sky. And an old lady yesterday, if you could wish one thing from someone in the sky, what would that be? And... Um, and, I'll slow, and if they're thinking, I'll ask the question again, so they get it. One thing on your heart. And, I, and then if they think, I say, I'd like to say, if it's okay with you, I always ask permission. 
would it be okay if I said a short prayer that God would help meet your wish? Because God cares about you. And what matters to you matters to God. And God sends rain on the just and the unjust. And God cares about all people. I've seen people get jobs. I've seen people get healed of cancer. Get your phone out. Okay, right now, God's going to put somebody on your heart. And I want you to text them that question. And you're going to say, I was just asked a, a question. And I thought of you, and I want to ask you this question. And whoever comes on your heart, doesn't matter who it is, just someone will come on your heart, and I'd love you to text them that question. Say, I, just, I was just asked a question, thought of you, I'd like to ask you this question. Now, do it now. This is live. If you could wish one thing from God today for you, what would that be? If they respond back, text a short sentence prayer. No epistles. Don't text an epistle. So a short, text a short sentence prayer for their one wish in Jesus' name. Okay? Here it is. And I say, if they respond back with something, just text a short sentence prayer for their one wish in Jesus' name. Say, dear God, I pray for Jeremy's to get well in Jesus' name. Amen. Short and sweet, just to the point. Don't start sharing the gospel or anything. Just short prayer for that one wish. I was in a workshop and I asked them to get out their phones. A lady texts some, I said, God's going to put somebody on your heart. She texts somebody. Then I heard a ping. She got an answer almost straight away back and she started crying. We just heard a ping. She started crying. She started crying and I just, she was just sitting in the front row to the side. And I said, oh, do you mind me asking why you're crying? She said, I text my ex-husband. She said, I text my ex-husband. Because that was the person that came on my heart. Can you imagine that? And he texts back. And I cried because do you know what he said? I wish we could get back together again. See, this is real life. This is not little fun game here you could connect with somebody 
One gal yesterday said, can I send it to a whole group? I said, sure. <laughs> you could choose a friend a day to text. And uh, do you like that question? Is that an okay question to ask somebody? Everybody has a wish. Everybody has a need, a dream, a desire, something on their hearts. And uh, if they say something like that my grandmother would come back to life, I miss her. <laughs> I'll say, you know, that's not possible for me to pray for that. So sometimes there's something impossible. Even Je Jesus, when he asked James and John, what do you want me to do for you? They replied to sit on the left and the right in the kingdom. And what did Jesus say? That's not for me to give, only my Father in heaven. So even Jesus couldn't answer everything. Um, if they say something ungodly, one young guy said I'd have better sex with my girlfriend. I said that's not possible to pray for that. And then what, with those kind of things, I, say, I went on to say, um, but did you know God has one wish for you? May I show you with the four pictures? So I went on to the second question. Um, but sometimes it's, it's a sincere thing, but not possible to pray for, like somebody coming back. Um, and, uh, um, but, uh, and then I'll just move on to the second question. If they can't think of something, I'll just say, that's okay. Somebody this week said, you know, I, I think I'm doing really fine. I said, oh, that's wonderful. I said, well, did you, so I moved to the second question. Did you know that God has one wish for you? May I show you with these four pictures? So I just moved on to the second question. And uh, let me show you that second question. And you've got this all in your notes. God also has one wish for you. May I show you with these four pictures? And so what we're doing here is we're going from one side of the coin, their wish from God, to the other side of the coin, God's wish for them. Do you see? And we're not suddenly dramatically changing subject. We're just going from one side of the subject to the other side of the, 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 other side of the coin. From their wish from God to God's one wish for them. And we desire that God desires, his wish is that no one perish, all come to a knowledge of the truth. And, um, and I'll just say that. I'll say, did you know God has one wish for you? May I show you with these four pictures? Would that be okay? I always ask permission. And often because it's pictures, they go, oh, what's that? You know, there's something about pictures. And it's four pictures, it's not 24 pictures. So it's, you know, and sometimes I'll do a little bit longer version and sometimes I'll do a shorter version. You know, you sense with time. Now, sometimes I prayed for somebody's one wish and I sense that's enough for them you know, the time or their interest level or something. And then I'll just say to them, um, I'll say, look, uh, did you know God has one wish for you? When you have a moment, please read this. Um, and someone I know wrote this. If we become friends, you can say a friend or a crazy Englishman. Uh, and I'll just give them this. So some people, um, and in fact, today when we go out, and we'll only go out for about four, a short time, um, what I'd love to set a simple goal is that we'll, connect, we'll pray, when you go out in twos and threes, we'll connect with three people, and we'll be able to ask three people their one wish and pray for that one wish, and we're praying that one of those three, we might move to the second question and share the four pictures. I would just want to have something like a simple goal. Is that Okay. Uh, with people. Now yesterday we met three people and shared both questions and all four, you know, we went with all, all, all of it. Um, and um, so, uh, is that okay? So I'll say, did you know that God has one wish for you? May I show you with these four pictures? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the first two pictures and then I want you to practice them two by two. And one of you is going to be the diamond and the other is going to be the black and white. 
and I want the diamond to share the diamond with the black and white, and then you switch and the other person shares. So choose which of the two of you, which one's going to be the diamond, and then the other one's going to be the black and white. And, um, so, all right. So I'm going to share firstly those two pictures, then you're going to practice them, and then I'm going to share the second two pictures, and you'll practice them. And if you've, been the, if you've been the diamond, you're then going to be Jesus' hand, the third picture. And if you, you, you are the black and white, you'll do the fourth picture, okay? So we'll do two sets of practicing, okay? All right? And, and relax in this practice. Don't worry about getting all my words right. Just get the basic idea. Uh, all right? Okay. Okay. Now, as I said, in here, you've got all the notes. You can also watch it on my wristband, and you've also got the conversation in here. So, I want you especially to watch me and listen to me and get the basic idea. All right? And um, oops, that's the four pictures. I have one where these are four flashcards, and when I've been with, sometimes with a group, we've done the four flashcards. Uh, so the first picture, the first point is, uh, I'll point, so I want you to put your finger on the diamond. Put your finger on the diamond. And, and, and the first one's going to be, the first picture is a diamond. And diamonds are of great value. The key word here is value. Say value. value. So diamonds are of great value, and you and I are of great value to God. And God's one wish is to begin a friendship with us. And I'll tell them, I'm not talking about religion, I'm talking about a personal friendship with God. So that's the first truth. Diamonds are of great value. You and I are of great value to God. And God's one wish is to begin a friendship with us. So the two key words, value, friendship. Okay. But I'll say, the second, the second is... But God seems far away. Do you remember in Chinese, it's like someone up in the sky. Far away. Someone or something in the sky. But God seems far away. For the Muslim, he's far away. God seems far away because... I'll point to the second picture. Put your finger on the second picture. I'll say, because you and I are on the dark side and God is on the light side. And I'll say, because we've done wrong, haven't we? And I'll, then I ask, I ask them three questions. And uh, you're just going to have, these are not on the slide, you're going to have to remember these three. I'll say, have you ever told a lie? I've told many. That makes us liars, doesn't it? All right? The second question I'll ask, have you ever taken something that didn't belong to you? Yes. Stolen something? Yes. I have. That makes us thieves. <laughs> I ask students, you ever cheated on exams? Yes. Ever called in sick at work and gone shopping? Yes. Ever cheated on taxes? So, and I'll say, I have, and that makes us thieves. Then I'll ask one more question. I'll say, have you ever wished somebody was out of your life? Maybe somebody's hurt you, a relative, a neighbor, somebody at work or school, and you say, I wish I never saw them again. It was like they're dead to me. They don't exist anymore. And I'll say, I have. 
And that's like murder in our hearts, even though we wouldn't kill them or want something bad to happen to them, but it's like, I wish they were dead. The prodigal son wanted his father dead. I wish, my one wish is that you drop dead on the spot, then I can get my inheritance now and not have to wait till you die. That was his one wish. Wasn't it? And, um, oh, by the way, just backing up on this, when I say somebody's of value, I'm not saying they're good. Well, what I'm doing is I'm starting in Genesis 1 with creation before I go to the black and white, which is Genesis 3 and the fall. But I'm starting with creation before the fall. But I'm not, when I say somebody's of great value, I'm not saying they're good. The prodigal son was of great value. Was he good? but he was of great value to the Father. Yes. And that's what we say, everybody is of great value to the Father. That's not saying they're good. Does that make sense? Yes. And um, Psalm 8, God has crowned everyone, made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. Everyone is of great value before God and before, therefore before you and me. And um, so, but God seems far away because we're on the dark side. Then what are those three questions? What's the first one? Have you ever, told a lie? ever told a lie? I have. Second? Have you Something that didn't belong to you. Third question? Have you, ever Have you ever wished someone was out of your life? That goes deeper. Oh, by the way, the second question, have you ever stolen something? I said, have you ever called in sick and then gone shopping or something? And I was in a workshop and a woman went, oops. <laughs> she said, I called in sick today to come to this workshop. <laughs> That's why we've all sinned today. All have sinned, all have sh fallen short of the glory of God. Now, do you notice the language? You and I have great value to God. Have you ever told a lie? I have. Ever taken something that didn't belong to you? I have. Ever wished someone was out of your life? I have. What's the language? Inclusive. It's inclusive language. It's us language, not you language. And that's, I find that very important. If I keep saying about you, They'll sense, oh, I get this. You're the good guy. I'm the bad guy. How can I become a good guy like you? And, t and that tends to build a wall. But we want to build a bridge. So we're in the same boat. Now, I know we're forgiven and saved and all of that, but it's the language of Isaiah who said, I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. And he started here. Or the Pharisee and the tax collector went into the, to pray. And the first one prayed <laughs> to himself probably, Lord, I'm so great. <laughs> and the other one, what? Standing at the back, didn't look up, beat his chest, have mercy on me, a sinner. So I find it's us language, not you language. Have you ever told, I have. Ever taken something that belonged to you? I have. Ever wished someone was out of your life? I have. And I'll say, these wrong things keep us on the dark side now, and when we die, we'll stay on the dark side forever. So let me go through those two again, then I want you to practice two by two. So point, point your finger to the diamond, and, and when, you share the, when you, you're the diamond, you have to ask the second question. So you'll say to the other person, did you know God has one wish for you? May I show you with these four pictures? And then you'll say, the first picture is a diamond. Diamonds are of great value. And you and I are of great value to God. And God's one wish is to begin a friendship with us. So those two key words, value and friendship. Then you'll switch and the second person, but why does God seem far away? Why can't we have this friendship? Because you and I are on the dark side and God is on the light side. Because we've done wrong, haven't we? And I'll mix the words wrong, wrongdoing and sin. I'll mix, you know, change them, use different words at different times. 
And then those three questions. Have you ever told a lie, ever taken something that didn't belong to you, ever wished someone was out of your life? And they may only agree with one or two of those. They only have to agree with one. If you break one part of the law, you break it all. So I'll say, and these wrong things keep us on the dark side now, and when we die, we'll stay on the dark side forever. So can you practice that two by two? Just get the basic idea. Start with the question, if you're the diamond, ask the other person, and then share the diamond, and then switch. Okay, okay. Sounds like we're having fun. <laughs> Especially this group over here. Pray for this group. Short prayers, but pray for this group. Okay. Now we're going to do the other two pictures and then you'll practice these. The diamond will be the Jesus hand and the black and white will be the friendship hands, okay? So, I'll say, and these things keep us on the dark side now, away from God. But I'll say, God doesn't want that because God's one wish is to have a friendship with us. So the third picture, God did something about it. All right? And I want you to put your right hand out. Put your right hand out. And I want you to put something in your left hand. Pick up a leaflet or your phone or something. All right? And I'll say, think of my right hand as you and me. And think of this as the wrong we've done. 
and, and I'll say, and this is on us now, so put it on your right hand. And remember, I'm using us language, and I'll say, this keeps us on the dark side away from God. Then I'll say, think of my left hand as, Je as God sent Jesus. And God put him on a cross. And then I'll say, God took all our lies and he put them on Jesus. And it's as if on the cross he became a liar who'd never told a lie. God took all our stealing, put it on Jesus, as if on the cross he became a thief who'd never taken anything. God took all our bitterness and hatred, put it on Jesus, as if on the cross he became a murderer who'd never hated anyone. And I'll say, and he did this for you and me, and I'll put my two hands out. He did this for you and me. So I'm trying with the pictures on my hands to make this visual. I'm not having a philosophical conversation up here. This is just, I'm, I want them to see this in a sim as simple way as possible. I try to keep away from religious terms, technical terms, theological terms, redemption, salvation, you know, justification, great words, great truths, but we have to put them in a simple way. It says of Jesus, the ordinary people heard him gladly. Because he, he talked in simple pictures and metaphors and, and ordinary life. Um, okay. <laughs> they said amen. <laughs> All right, so I'll say, think of my right hand as you and me. Think of this is the wrong we've done. This is on us now. And think of my other hand as God sent Jesus and put him on a cross. Now, the short version, if I sense sometimes with somebody, you know, you sense, I've got to keep this, to, you, I'll just say, and God took all our lies, all our bitterness, all our stealing, and he put it on him. You know, you sense sometimes you've got to be shorter than longer. I've done the whole th thing in 30 seconds in an elevator going up, showing somebody, because I just had 30 seconds with somebody. So you learn, you know, but if I have the time, I'll say, God took all our lies and put them on Jesus. And as if on the cross, he became a liar who'd never told a lie. God took all our stealing, put it on Jesus as if on the cross, he became a thief who'd never taken anything. God took all our bitterness and hatred, put it on Jesus as if on the cross, he became a murderer. And he did this for you and me. Now, I'll say this to you. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say this to them. It means on the hillside on that Friday, there were three thieves, not two thieves. There were three liars, not two liars. There were three murderers, not two murderers. The two on the outside for their lies, for their stealing, for their murdering, the one in the middle for our lies, our stealing, our bitterness and hatred. And he did this for you and me. Now, the one verse I quote, and you don't need to master it today if you don't know it, is 2 Corinthians 5.21. And um, in the authorized version, it'll say, He who knew no sin became sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God. In the message, I find this easier for ordinary people, and I'll just say, God put the wrong on him who never did anything wrong so that we could be put right with God. And if I was, if you like this approach, I would ask you to mem master this, memorize this one, this is the only verse you have to memorize. Now don't worry necessarily today, but if you, if you like this and want to help this approach, I'd ask you to memorize that verse and do it in the message. And it's also in your English version of this leaflet, that verse, all right? And just say, God put the wrong on him who'd never done anything wrong so that we could be put right with God. And he did this for you and me. And then we move to the fourth picture. And then, then I say, look at my right hand now. It's free, it's empty for the fourth picture, which is friendship hands. And I'll say, and, God, and I do this, I say, God is reaching out his hand to you and me. Although I'll actually say God is reaching out his hand to you. So now we're going from us language and the conversation starting to zero in on them. 
and I say, and God is reaching out his hand to you. And he wants to have a friendship with you. Sometimes I'll say he won't grab your hand because you can't force a friendship. You can't say you're going to be my friend, okay? <laughs> Hi, friend. <laughs> you can't, you know, it's got to, there's both sides have got to respond. So I'll say God is reaching out his hand. Often people will take my hand. And often that shows something in the conversation has been connecting this way and this way. And if they don't, that's fine. It doesn't matter because it's just an illustration. But I'll say God is reaching out his hand to you and wants to begin a friendship with you. He wants to forgive you for all your wrongdoing. And he wants you to come his way, not your way. And that's what repentance is. Going, I go from this way, turn around, and I go 100% 80 degrees the opposite direction. Metanoia. It's also the idea of lordship, leadership. Where I want you to go my way, not your way. The idea he's going to take charge. But I'm trying to keep away from religious terms. Even lordship. Does that make sense? But give the meaning of it. And um, so... All right? So, let me go through those two pictures again, and then I want you to practice them two by two. So it'll end up on the second picture, so we're on the dark side. But God doesn't want that because God's one wishes to ha have a friendship with us. So the third picture, God did something about it. Think of my right hand as you and me. Think of this as the wrong we've done. Think of this other hand. God sent Jesus and put him on a cross. And God took all our lies, all our stealing, all our bitterness, and he put it on him on the cross. And he did this for you and me. And then you switch and say, and look at my hand now. It's free. It's empty for the last picture, which is friendship hands. And God is reaching out his hand to you, wants to begin a friendship with you. He wants to forgive you your sin, and he wants you to come his way, not your way. Would you like to take his hand? And you stop there. In a, after we practice this, I'm going to share with you the prayer I use to help somebody take God's hand. All right? So just practice those two by two. Um, and, uh, all right?
Okay. Is this okay so far? Oh yeah, when I pray for somebody's one wish, especially in a public setting, I don't, you know, I'm in McDonald's or Starbucks, I don't get on my knees and say, oh Lord. I thank you for this opportunity, Lord. You can do that in church. I'll just say, I don't even close my eyes usually. I just, and often I, I might ask their name just before I pray for them. And often, if I do that, I'll give my name first. Oh, by the way, my name is Richard. This is my wife, Rachel. May I ask your name? Because it's lovely then to say, Father, I thank you for meeting Larry today. And I ask that you will make his back well in Jesus' name. Amen. By the way, I met one man. This is in England, the north of England. I asked his one wish, and he says, well, I'm going home to kill myself. He was 40 years of age. His name was Mark. Never forget his name. And, uh, and I said, let's have a cup of coffee. There was an outside cafe. I said, let me get you a cup of coffee. Got him some coffee. And he said, you know, my whole body is full of pain. I just can't live with it anymore. I said, would it be okay if I said a short prayer? He said, yes. I put my hand on his shoulder and said, Lord, I just ask you to take this pain away in Jesus' name. Amen. And I'm not a great faith person, not a great healer. You know, I'm a struggling <laughs> follower of Jesus. And he went, It's like a weight is coming off my shoulders and the pain is going away. And then he said, Richard, no one has ever prayed for me before. No one. And you might get that far with somebody. Was that worth it? Okay, so this is, we've got to the um, fourth picture. And I'll say, would you like to take his hand? And God wants to forgive you for all your wrong, and he wants you to come his way, not your way. And then what do I do to take his hand? This is a little prayer I pray for the last three pictures. And the three key words are sorry, thank you, and please. I'm trying to use simple words. And so put your finger on the black and white. I'll point to the black and white. And I'll say, you have to say, I'm so sorry for the wrong that I've done and going my own way. Are you? And then I point to Jesus' hand and thank you on the cross. You took all my sin. Then I'll point to the friendship hands and say, please, God, would you forgive me? I want to take your hand of friendship and go your way. So those three words, sorry, thank you, please, are like three coat hangers that you're going to hang the, the prayer on. All right. And actually, those three words, I think, are the most important words in any relationship. They're the most important words in my marriage. If I say to my honey, honey, thank you so much for being you and being so soothing. And I'm so sorry, I wasn't listening to you. What was that again? And honey, please could you help me put these packets of One Wish materials together? How does that describe our relationship? They're the three key words in business. They're the three key words in this church. If you say thank you, sorry, please every day in your relationships, because they're humble words. And I'll say that, would you like to take his hand? And then I'll say, I can lead you in a, in a prayer 
and you and as I pray I'll ask them to look at the pictures to help focus them so they're not looking around embarrassed and thinking you know what do I do I say look at these pictures let me go back to away from that oh it's a drill I say I'll say, um, look, at these, look at these pictures, look at the pictures. And I'll say, I want to lead you in a prayer. You can pray this in your heart or out loud. God hears both. What matters is you mean it. And very often they'll say, I'll pray in my heart, and then they pray out loud with me. And I want to pray this prayer. Say, repeat this prayer afterwards out loud with me so you get the idea. Put your finger on the black and white, and I'll say, dear God, I'm so sorry for the wrong that I've done and going my own way. Now move your finger to Jesus' hand and thank you on the cross. You took all my sin in my place. And then I point to the friendship hands. And please God, would you forgive me? I want to take your hand I want to go your way. In Jesus' name. Amen. And the three is, you've got the three pictures to help you, and you just remember the three words, sorry, thank you, please. Okay? And then when I prayed, often I'll look at them and say, did you mean that? Sometimes I can see they meant it. And then what I do is, I'll give them my wristband and say, can I give you my wristband? If it's a lady, um, and you can pick up another white or black one here as well, um, not just for today, but maybe another day. This is not about to just today. Um, and say, may I give you my wristband? And this, now for me, I'm married, I'll say, this reminds me of my wedding ring, and that special day, this will remind you of this day. But if you don't have a wedding ring, you can just say, this will remind you of this special day. And then I'll say, can I give you this leaflet? And this, read this again, because this will show you the four pictures. And then I want you to think of somebody that you can show this to today. A friend or a family member, I want you to show the wristband and say, I've begun a friendship with God, and you can too. And then give them this leaflet. And I've watched people do this. I let a man out, outside the restaurant to the Lord he grabbed me by the arm. He said, this was meant to be. I gave him my wristband. He put it on. I gave him a leaflet and said, now think of family or friend today. He said, my family are in the restaurant. He said, I'm going to show them right now. He said, I've got a big family. I said, good. I'm going to give him a whole packet of leaflets. <laughs> and he went inside and showed his whole family. I led a man to the Lord on a plane. He sat back in the seat. He said, wow, I never knew it was a gift. I always thought you had to earn it and work for it. And then he said at the end, I'm with 12 guys on a mechanics course on the plane. We're flying to a course. This is in America. And when he got off the plane, he, he got, you know, they all meet together. When they get off the plane, he said, he said, guys, I've got to tell you what happened on the plane. And I've got to tell you about my new friend. It wasn't me. And he shared with these 12 guys, all mechanics. They weren't in the choir. And it was wonderful. Did he get all the words right? No. Did it matter? No. He was just telling what happened to him on the plane. And, um, and I found if you wear the wristband, even, you know, you don't get all this today, just wear the wristband and say, Lord, that somebody might notice. You know, like when you, when you have an engagement ring or a wedding, you know, you want to show, but it just say, Lord, I pray everybody will notice. <laughs> I had one Delta pilot guy, very smart guy, flew planes, but very shy. And he said to me, oh, Richard, he says, I get all. Mm -hmm. I said, just pray somebody will notice your wristband. He gets back to me a couple of weeks later. He said, I was wearing the wristband on the plane. Everybody got off and my four flight attendants were there. And one of them said, what are those pictures? And he said, Richard, I got to share those four pictures with somebody.
those four girls, flight attendants, he said, I've never done that in my life before. He was a one in 28 year person. I've never done that in my life before. Is this approach okay? Is this something might be helpful? Yes. And uh, I know there's a lot there to, you know, kind of get. Um, but you've got the pictures. You've got your instruction card. You've got this in a leaflet. You've got my website you can watch. As I said, one, two, two people went out two days ago and just said, hey, we've just been learning something. Can I come and practice with you on you? Show, I've got to show, you know. Uh, and ju just be simple. And I'd say, we're just going to go out. What's the time now? The park is 10 minutes away, isn't it? Um, yeah. Okay. Can I send you out? This is going to sound short, I know, for 45 minutes. I know that's short, but I want us to come back for a, a, just a short time of sharing and prayer and a couple of things I want to say. This is just to get a taste. And I would say in your 45 minutes, I may not even get to the park, you know. Uh, but be praying, Lord, would you give us three people that we could ask the first question to? and pray for their one wish. And Lord, would you give us this afternoon one person we could get to sh ask the second question and show the wristband to. And we do our part. God does his part. They have to do their part. It's a triangle. And uh, so we want to do our part, what we can. All right? So let's, let's just pray together. And... Um, I've probably taken about an hour or so with the train. I'm sorry, taking a little longer. But I hope this has been helpful. But as I said, it, I, want, um, I want you to be thinking of if, if this is something helpful, you could just be looking for opportunities every day. Um, so, Father, just thank you for this opportunity, just a short time out. Lord, and that you'll connect each of our little teams of two to three people, connect with three people, and at least one of those will get an opportunity to share the wristband. And Lord, we're asking this afternoon, there might be those that want to take your hand. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, there's a few more leaflets here. At least if you've got um, about three leaflets seed, a couple of English or a couple of Cantonese and one English. Um, if you want to take an extra wristband or two, you can. By the way, even somebody who's a seeker who doesn't take God's hand, but I think they're sincere, I might say to them, uh, can I give you my wristband? And this will remind you of this conversation. And often so it's like a gift. Somebody says, oh, I'd like that, you know. So if you want to take an extra wristband, you can do that there. Uh, if you want to take an extra leaflet, we've got a, f a few of them here. Um, and um, so here's some English. All right. Uh, if anybody would like another Cantonese, you hand those out, grab another Cantonese. <laughs>